The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Hello, Heck Industries. PlayStation 4 controller mod? Uh, hold please. Hello, Heck Industries. Single-handed controller for the PlayStation 4? Um, hold for a moment, please. Hello, Heck Industries. Hold please. Um, yeah, hi, we don't normally take orders through Skype. Ben, the phones are ringing off the hook. People want an accessibility controller for the PlayStation 4, ever since they saw the one you made for the Xbox. Okay, on today's episode, I believe that we can build a single-handed PS4 accessibility controller. I just have one question, though. What's a phone call? Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. PlayStation 4 controller has a lot of stuff crammed into it. It's got this touchpad that clicks. The PlayStation button is lower because they've got a speaker here. So we really don't have as much room to place things as we do with other controllers like the old Xbox 360 controller. I put this extended uh, panel here and it has a curve to match the curve of the analog stick base. And I've got the same four-way tack switch that we used on the Xbox One controller because we know it works. And my first instinct is to use the same D-pad top as well, right there. Okay, let's see how this works. Okay, that's pretty good. I can see my thumb is kind of hitting that there. See how it's hitting the edge of it? It's not a big deal, but it's not really ideal either. Uh, yeah, it just it's, this is a little too tall. If it was lower, then I'd have more room and I can still get to it with my thumb. Um, ideally, I would have liked to put it in the center, you know, so my thumb can just reach over and hit it, but there's a headphone jack here we have to keep open. So we have to be cognizant of things like that. What I think I'll do is I'll print a different version of this and uh, try it out. All right, so this guy, oh man, I only put a little glue on there. When I'm prototyping, I'll just use just enough hot glue to make something stick. All right, I've got the replacement. This one is recessed, but it still had to have a flat portion. So the previous one, the concavity was on the bottom so the pins are able to fit through. On this one, the concavity is on the top. So it basically swallows the thumbstick. See how that's fairly flush now? Let's see how it works. Okay, I'm just gonna, actually, I'm feeling pretty confident about this. I'm gonna put a decent amount of hot glue in there. You know, just for the, for the children. It almost looks like it belongs there. So in the case of this controller, we can use these rounded portions to our advantage, specifically allowing us to place things closer to the sticks and also using the curved surface area for better glue retention. Because it's a curve, it just basically sticks better. There's more angles to it. I'll reinforce it with super glue later. And actually this guy right here, I'm gonna just give him just a, just a little bit of glue just in case it doesn't work, we can pull it out. Compress it into place, there we go. See on the bottom how you can see the pins coming through? We made sure that the um, bottom layer was no more than a 16th of an inch thick, which is the average thickness of a PCB. Thus, a tack switch will fit through it. Uh, yes, yeah, so by keeping that layer that thin, it still has enough strength and the pins fit through it. Oh yeah, this is much better. See how I'm moving my thumb around? And it's staying well above the D-pad. I can still hit the D-pad, but it's at a lower angle. Uh, unfortunately, you know, you have to do quite a few things with one thumb with one of these controllers, so the more room you have, the better. Let's see, I'm playing the game. Yeah. So the D-pad is attached, which we know we're gonna need. I'm gonna open up the controller and take a look inside. and we'll figure out how to attach the wires. Sony usually makes our controllers a little bit more complicated than Xbox. And by a little bit more complicated, I mean a lot more complicated. 
hopefully this is something that is not only hand solderable, but something that um, <clears throat> isn't too difficult so our viewers could attempt it as well. Yeah, this probably pops downward, I would imagine. Did I get all the screws? Is there a fake screw under this? I bet it's fake, let's take a look. Oh no, the barcode is gonna be ruined. Oh, the controller trying to turn itself on. It's become self-aware. And that's a fake screw hole, all right. I knew it. <laughs> I was gonna cut my thumbnails last night, cut my other fingers, but I'm glad I didn't. I like to use my edge of my thumb nail to uh, open things up like controllers. Yeah. That's probably why humans have fingernails. It's to open up video game controllers. All right, let's see what's inside of it. Okay, so this lighted connector in the USB is connected via that ribbon cable. Inside of it here, hmm, the battery's a lot bigger than it was in the PlayStation 3. Of course, it has this big light it has to illuminate. Under this is probably the connector we need to get to. Is there a screw on it? Yes. What they do is they have a silk screen circuit for the face buttons right there. And then when you bolt it together, it presses against these contacts here. And that's how you make the connections. Of course, these sticks are built in. Here's your share and option buttons. Whatever happened to a good old start button, right? If you look at this intact controller, say I'm playing with one hand, right-handed. Now I'll probably put the L2 trigger down here, which still leaves L1 and uh, clicking this button in. If I put the ball of my thumb here, or I don't know what that's called, the joint of my thumb, I could have a button here or here. See, pew, pew, pew. bam, 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 bam. Now this is the more common usage in a video game. So I would say this is an easier or more natural position. So I'll put that button there and that button there. I put some tack switches in here so my thumb can hit them. Inside, I had to remove some plastic for those to fit, it wasn't too difficult. I covered them with hot glue to secure them in place. I also shaved down this curved portion so the wires can get to the um, directional pad. And I had to make sure these switches were flat enough so when we put this in place, it doesn't impede it. I'm gonna wanna check how much room there's gonna be. Okay, so if we look here, there we go with some light. We should be able to snake the wires up around this way and over here onto the circuit board. Going to remove the analog stick using this desoldering iron I got from Element 14. Now, I flowed this lead free solder with some leaded solder, but I still need to let it heat up pretty good before I release the vacuum. <laughs> That way it gets all the, all the solders flowed and fluid before you actually try to suck it out. Otherwise you won't get it all. It's a rule of thumb. If you can see empty space around the pin, that means it's good to pull out. I've taken the analog stick and I've tied the positive ends together and the negative ends together. So when it's actuated against your leg, that's left. That's right, that's up, and that's down. So we need four wires total, ground, voltage reference, and then horizontal and vertical. So I'm gonna attach these three wires here, 
and then loop this one around and then hot glue it so they'll stay secure. Mmm, good. Yummy. The front of it's pretty much done. I printed this cap to plug up the analog hole. You know, might as well try to make these look nice using 3D printers and the equipment I have available now. Now it's time for a tech timeout. I thought it would be nice to just point out how useful 3D printers are in many applications, such as building accessibility controllers. I'm able to make nice, smooth objects that fit the contours of existing parts of the controllers. I can make custom D-pads and buttons. It's very handy. And it's also fast. I don't have to go and get the parts someplace else. I can just click a button and 30 minutes later, it'll pop out of my 3D printer. So if you do any sort of prototyping work at all, definitely consider getting a 3D printer. You'll wonder how you live without it. When I'm not solving all of life's problems through the magic of modding, you can find me on element14.com, talking with other industry experts, engineers, and hobbyists about all things electronic. With over 200,000 members, Element 14 is one of the largest electronic communities on the web. So come join in on the fun. Stay up to date on the latest engineering topics, from the hottest technologies to the latest design trends, by participating in one of Element 14's exclusive webinars, along with Google Hangouts. Or test your skills in one of Element 14's design challenges, such as wireless power or wearable electronics, to see how you stack up against other members. You'll also be able to enroll in road tests that allow you the opportunity to test the latest electronics for free. For more information about these features and much, much more, visit element14.com today. These are the contact pads for the silkscreen printed face button circuit. And what we need to do is connect to these small vias on the other side of this circuit board. All right, so on the reverse of the board, we can see the vias. Of course, they're right under the silk screen, so we can't really see them. So what I've got to do is I've got to basically scratch the solder mask off and make contact to them. <laughs> what I did here was I carefully scraped the solder mask off of the vias that I needed. Then I tinned them with solder so they will receive wires. And then I cleaned up the solder mask. The vias that we need, we need four for the left triggers, so L1 and L2, and we also need four for up, down, left, and right, because those are the things we're going to move from one side of the controller to the other. Let's put this in place. And I haven't uh, mucked these up yet, so that's good. Then we can put our circuit board in place. and secure it with the screw. I need to keep these wires flat because the battery pack needs to go over everything. So on this side, I'm gonna wire them in the way that's most convenient for the location of the wires. And then these will come down and attach the back of the tack switch there. Not a lot of room to work in here. <sighs> Fogging up the glass. These vias have been pre-tinned, so what I'm doing is making sure the wires strip back and then I'm just heating up the wires on top of the vias to connect it. I have these notes written down for the D-pad, which I'll wire the same way as the Xbox One single-handed controller. So I've got to match up these wires here. This represents the uh, tack switch from the bottom. So I've got to use that as my map for how to wire the blue wire to it. And I've already attached the um, common or ground. I've attached it directly to the ground plane of the controller. So time to wire this up. This won't be confusing at all. The last thing to add to the PlayStation 4 accessibility controller is a secondary trigger. Um, obviously you can hit the R2 trigger, but you can't hit the L2 trigger, so we're going to put a trigger right here. Now it's an analog trigger, but we don't have a lot of room to make a mechanical analog switch. Also, we can't rewire the membrane switch that we found inside of it, so I came up with a solution 
we put switches in series and then we kind of do a voltage division across it. So we have our two signals going to our controller that always passes through a 10K resistor. So there's about a 10K nominal resistance. Then when you push this switch, you will decrease the resistance, which will act like the sugar is being pushed. And when you push this switch, it will completely eliminate all resistance, which is like the trigger being fully pulled. Then I 3D printed, <laughs> I did many different attempts, but I finally got something that worked pretty decent. I 3D printed a trigger assembly, here's the base, and this slots into it. And then I use a little brass rod as the pinion. And it's got two different levels to it. So this, for me, this was the easiest solution that also didn't take up too much space. So we can mount it right there. So you can hit both triggers with one hand. I'm using these surface mount resistors here so this doesn't take up too much space. So these two points I'm going to attach to the controller and I've already ported out that wire. So I'm just going to see what kind of the minimal distance I can get away with is. It's probably about that much. I'm gonna cut it there. And I'm gonna go a little bit more than that. Again, you always want to be able to take it apart. All right, it's in this guy. Yeah, that's about right. Drill a hole through him. I drilled the hole through the inside so I could make sure that I missed some of the support structure. I've attached the analog stick upside down, so I have to look at my notes to make sure I do this right. But basically, you always have to flip, so this would make sense, right? Nope, I always have to flip. It's like the Murphy's Law of wiring. It's to the point where if you don't have to flip, it's like, oh, I better check to make sure this is right. It's that prevalent. So again, like all analog sticks, all you really need is, um, there's reference voltage, ground, and then the two analog wipers. So we only need a total of four wires. There were actually some early PlayStation 3 analog sticks that had like integrated circuits on the stick, like a digital potentiometer, and it was so overdone, like everything on the PlayStation 3. Now the analog is wired up. I think this controller is good to go. Here's the controller. Left one has been moved here. L3, which is when you click in the left stick, has been moved here. The left analog's on the bottom. That's how you move your character or your cursor on screen. These two are the same. What we've added is the L2 button we've put over here. All right. And it all went together pretty nicely. The only exposed wire is on this analog stick. We could probably snake it through here, but you might hit the rumble motor, so it's easier just to have one wire exposed than to lose the rumble motor. All right, so what games do I have here? Why do they change the menu on PlayStation 4? Oh, I have the pinball arcade, of course, so I guess I can, I can play pinball with one hand, which is something you can't do normally. All right. Wow, I started a mode already. The Tale of the Flying Horse. Go for the gold symbol. <laughs> this is a pretty cool game. I wouldn't mind having this game. Oh, oh, can I, oh, I can nudge the table using my stick. I can even tilt. Oh, this thing's got a really liberal tilt on it. Oh, I tilted. <laughs> so again, the basic idea with these single-handed controllers, oh, I didn't get the skill shot, is to um, put all the controls on one side so you don't need your other hand. Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, no, oh, come on. I didn't get a shooting star. This table is well rendered. Yeah, I got it. I charmed the snake. I'll go for the super skill shot. 
Looks like it'll work. I did a pretty good job of making it um, actually kind of look like a finished product and not have too many messy wires laying around. So one more device that's available from benheck.com for persons with disabilities because everyone should be able to game. Now that I've created a PlayStation 4 accessibility controller, I can send them to all the people who need one. That's all the time we have for today. On the next episode of The Ben Heck Show, we're going to be working on an LED rotating persistence of vision display. We'll see you then. <coughs> Too much snow. Now look at the camera and like nod. A wink. I'm going to have to punish you. Hey, that could be how my movie starts. You know what I should got you was a calendar of dead whales because that's what you're doing to the oceans. Wow. Over the shoulder, older molder, boulder holder, scolder. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.